Okay, so uh, we'll talk about the disc, disc triggered ignition system. But before we get started into those, we just sort of have to back up a little bit and show you where we came from with the solid state mechanical ignitions and which direction those have gone in with the CD1, CD200, DISN, and NGI1000, so you know sort of which classification each of them are uh, following. So the, the Ultronic 1 is uh, up to three outputs, and that uh, fits on one to six cylinder inline engines, but uh, obviously with three outputs and fitting a six cylinder engine, that's an exhaust stroke firing type system. Uh, they also go on one to three cylinder horizontals like the Ajax and Ultronic 2. Uh, we're not going to talk about them today because the, none of the disc triggered systems follow the Ultronic 2 uh, product line. Uh, the Ultronic 3, uh, two to 16 cylinders, medium sized engines, you're, you're typically your Cats and Walkershaws. Then your Ultronic 5s for the small inline engines, uh, and those could be exhaust stroke firing, or they could be uh, only on the compression stroke firing. So, and, uh, product evolution on the left side, uh, Ultronic 1s typically, because of their small size and low cost, uh, would move into the CD1s. Uh, Ultronic 2, this column we're not going to follow at all. Medium and high speed engines where we might have the 3 and now the Ultronic 3 NG, the next generation is up a set of updated electronics. Uh, those can move into this column which are CPU 90s, 95s, 95 EDSs. These are, we will not talk about these, but these are systems that are working off of the ring gear counts and a reset pin. And those do not have the disc that we're speaking of today, but we are speaking of the DISN CD1, 200D NGI 1000, uh, where an Ultronic 3, 3 is what you started out with possibly. And then the Ultronic 5, uh, 5 NG, uh, typically, because of those being on smaller sized engines, you would go into a CD1, CD200. So there's a lot of uh, application flexibility here uh, where you could use the, the NGI 1000. Um, you could use it where an Ultronic 1 went, but typically the evolution in the uh, series of uh, movements variation, you know, usually di dictated by cost was um, go from a 1 to a CD1, your DISN CD200D and 2000 NGIs. So uh, the nice thing uh, about these also, this evolution, is that uh, some of the first systems were potted. Uh, the CD1s were all a potted type ignition, CD200s. When you move into the CD200D, it is not potted, so it's a serviceable ignition, has two boards in it. And then the NGI1000, uh, again, not potted. Uh, a lot of features uh, similar to the EVS type ignitions uh, with all the ability to, to control the, the sparks uh, for current and uh, duration. So uh, the, the other good thing or nice thing for end customers is that the costs have not escalated. They've actually uh, been contained quite, quite well. And, and between a CD1, CD200, and NGI1000, there isn't that much price difference, but the uh, feature set on an NG1, NGI1000 is, is at least 10 times what a CD1 is or a CD200. So you're getting a lot more bang for things have evolved and we've moved into the next generation products. I also want to point out at our website, <clears throat> almost everything we're going to talk about today has more literature to it. And if something uh, uh, piques your interest and you need to ask more questions or dig into something, uh, be sure to know that you know when you go to the website, you're going to see our homepage in, under downloads. You're going to see a list like you see here on the right. 
And under those, what we're going to look at today is the CD1, CD200, DISN 800, NGI 1000, and almost all of those, like this one right here for the 800s, it's a brochure, application list, installation instructions, and then service instructions. So uh, with all these systems, you're going to find a, a listing of a grouping for all these products. So that's where you find everything on our website. So the CD1 ignition uh, has been built into this case for many, many years. Initially, it was a plastic case, um, but these are built uh, where they can uh, fit onto an eight-cylinder engine max. Um, it's universal, uh, low cost, accurate timing. The timing comes from uh, holes drilled in flywheels or holes in a metallic disc um, versus inductive systems just like all our CD systems, extends the spark plug life. Uh, no moving parts to wear or to rebuild. It's, it's totally potted, resists vibration. Uh, it's 12 to 24 volt DC powered, so if it's an automotive sized engine and you've got 12 volt starters or a, an engine in the field for irrigation, uh, you may have a 12 volt system, so it works just fine on 12 volts. Uh, it's high energy spark. Uh, and it's also got some diagnostics. Uh, you've got two LEDs on the side of the case here. Uh, one is for the magnetic pickup operation. And as you're cranking over, it, it, you'll see it flashing so you know your pickup's working. And then you have an LED for your uh, output circuit operation. So very simple diagnostics, but at least you can see that it's being triggered and then also that it's firing. So it can be applied in either single firing or double firing exhaust stroke firing modes. Four CD1 units are offering are offered uh, using uh, eight outputs. So this, they're all 791.010s, either a dash three, four, six, or eight. Now all of these systems <clears throat> they trigger based on the number of holes in the flywheel uh, or in a disc. So you can actually use the six or the eight on a three-cylinder or four-cylinder application, whatever it might be. It's just that you can save some costs by uh, choosing the, the lesser number of outputs in all these systems. And um, again, a three will fit on a six-cylinder, but it's going to be double firing, exhaust stroke firing. And then the same with the, the dash four will do up to an eight-cylinder engine double firing. Uh, got your CD1 unit here, your switch for changing your timing. It's, you're able to retard uh, the timing based on your disc position. Uh, you've got your harness that goes out to your 12 to 24 volt DC, a connectorized connect, uh, connection to a harness that goes out to your primary, to your cylinders, to your coils. And then you got another one that goes to your magnetic pickup. And these magnetic pickups, there's a variety of them available, uh, but the CD1 is uh, an unshielded system. Uh, it's a pretty basic system. If you need to move into a shielded system, you, you've got to go into the CD200. And uh, magnetic pickups are three-quarter 16 thread, and they're a low-cost thread. And the disc, uh, the beauty of the CD1 unit, typically for lower cost ease of installation, you're not always putting a disc on the engine because some of the engines are difficult to find a place to mount a disc at cam speed. So typically, uh, this magnetic pickup would be mounted through a bell housing, drilled and tapped, and then on the flywheel, you're going to drill the pattern, uh, which is dictated by the number of uh, cylinders. And in the instructions, it tells you how many holes, where to drill them, the, the number of degrees for all those. And then in, uh, <clears throat> if you have the ability to mount a disc, we offer all the discs in a couple different sizes that we'll show you. But again, this is a metallic disc, uh, holes drilled in that. There's no magnets, so this is a real basic system. And uh, this one being an exhaust stroke firing, you can see that the A output, the first one to come out, goes to the plus. The minus of that coil goes to the plus of this coil. Then the minus of this coil goes over here to a, 
the, the minus terminal, which then goes to ground. So these two, one and four are in uh, series, and then two and three are in series, and that's how you get the exhaust stroke firing system. The discs, if you're going to drill them, um, make your own, uh, because sometimes the ones that we we may offer may not be the right size. Um, so it's typically just a hole, and the pattern is, uh, in this case, the, if it's a, a two output or even a one output, you're going to have to drill two holes, 180 opposed, and then 30 degrees after the second firing would be another hole at 210 degrees. And then you can see that the other ones, if it's a three or six, a three plus one, like you see here, it's zero, 120, 240. And then 20 degrees later is the 260, which is the index hole. So it senses and fires the first output, the A wire, the B wire, the C wire, and then it indexes and then repeats firing A, B, C, A, B, C as the disc comes around. So typically, when you drill a flywheel, you set the engine with number one cylinder in the most advanced timing position. And sometimes, because the way these work is you're going to trigger off of that hole and you can retard it with the uh, rotary switch, uh, you're going to want to give it a couple of extra degrees so that you know that you can retard the timing back to where you want it to be. So, you know, if you run a 20 before, you might want to set 24 before just give it a few degrees. And then you're going to mark the point on the flywheel that's opposite the pickup. And generally, you, you drill right through the uh, flywheel. And then you have to drill a 3 8 hole, 10, or close to 10 millimeters. Uh, and that will be your A firing. So the rest of the holes, uh, you index the flywheel, 180, and then 210 for the uh, reset. And uh, same for the 3 to 6 cylinder. And then an eight cylinder is every uh, 90 degrees of the flywheel. Uh, so these uh, angles uh, are extremely important as that establishes the basic timing accuracy of the system. So if you drill the holes wrong, uh, you basically have to start again. So you don't want to do it wrong. Uh, you don't want to weld on that. You don't want to have to plug them up and, and start over. So. Uh, and the other thing that you typically do is make sure that each hole is drilled so its center passes directly in line with the center of the pickup. Uh, there's a timing switch under the white plastic cap at the end of the box. The range uh, for the different holes and, and number of cylinders on the engine is 2.8 degrees per switch interval, gives you 20 degrees total, 1.9, 1.4, and gives you 13 to 10 degrees of total timing retard. Uh, switch 7, position 7, gives the most advanced timing. So if you start your engine and you're too far advanced, uh, you just start clicking in a few positions till you get the timing to where you want it to be. Switch position 0 is full retard. And, and they always caution you never to go from 0 to 7 because it's a large timing jump and you don't want to do that, especially under load. So when you use the timing light, you set it to the desired position with the engine running at normal engine speed, not idle. Uh, click your, your switch positions in to get your timing where you want it to be, and then put the cap back on. Okay, so that's the basics of a CD1. When you go into the CD200, uh, you can see the pictures over here. This is the, sim the same case, uh, different number of LEDs. This one only has one. This thing gets a whole lot smarter. And you've got the unshielded system with the cables coming out for the harnesses. And then you've also got one with the MS connector, which can be installed for a hazardous area, uh, Group D Division II type installation. So this is a, a universal small engine ignition system. It's negative ground, like all the, the ones, threes, fives, uses the blue coils typically. Capacitive discharge, uh, but with this one, instead, instead of the uh, CD1 being limited to sixes, 
six outputs. This has eight and 12 output models. The configuration is uh, programmed using a uh, terminal program. Uh, you select a feature set uh, appropriate to the application and you can make this work very simply just like a CD1 uh, or you can add timing versus RPM curves. You have the ability to give it an analog signal uh, where it's a potentiometer or a 4 to 20 signal to change timing. Spark energy is selectable. You've got, I think, three different modes of spark energy, so you can kick it up if you need to. Uh, lean burn applications, uh, biogas, uh, anything like that. Uh, it's got an adjustable over speed trip, again, through the terminal program. The only switches and the only thing you can do from the outside of this is retard the timing uh, based on that switch position, you know, after you've drilled your holes or mounted your disk. So everything you do on this one is going to have to be done with the terminal program. And the other thing that you can do is individual cylinder timing adjustment. And uh, it's not typically done by the novice, but uh, some applications, uh, people need to do that on certain occasions. So again, hazardous area approved when you get into the shielded variation. The diagnostics for the system troubleshooting is PC-based and also flashing LED. So the LED on the end of the unit, you're going to be able to uh, use the blink codes if you just don't want to hook up a, a laptop. But uh, laptops can give you the most information with the terminal program. You've got Modbus RTU communications and the ability to change, make these changes through the Modbus. Uh, the eight position timing switch is configurable with the time, the amount of timing per click. Got the Windows based terminal program that you download from our website. And uh, pretty easy uh, installation uh, with a single pickup design. Um, very cost effective, full featured alternative to a distributor type system. Just a few uh, pictures of the ignition installed on a few different engines. These are Cummins 8.3 or 5.9s. And you can see it's bolted right to a plate on the side of the engine. These are a potted system, so they're resistant to vibration. Uh, these are the 591040 coils. You can use them with the blue coils also. This one is on a Caterpillar 3306. This was a solution by one of our distributors where they uh, package the junction box, the ignition module, and then they also have a machined a disc that's mounted underneath this cover. And uh, you can see the pickup go to the side over here and uh, underneath the disc. So you, this is a uh, cam speed disc, so it's a uh, compression stroke only firing type application. And here we're on a MAN uh, 2866. You can see the ignition mounted on the side of this generator. And then uh, nicely packaged in this enclosure. This one's on a Hino. Uh, this one, uh, you can see that something peculiar is off of the uh, mag drive that used to be here. They've fashioned a disc, which is a somewhat small diameter, but it's large enough, it's almost four inches, which is mounted in this enclosure. And it's got the pickup coming right out of the side of it. So uh, with all these systems being magnetic pickup based, uh, the disc usually has to be of adequate size so that you get enough surface speed at cranking. So that you can trigger the magnet. It's, it's not always common to see something mounted at a, a distributor drive speed or, you know, half to one uh, because you have to make sure that you can, uh, you know, maintain a fairly close gap to get enough uh, pick output out of the pickup. But this one does work, but it's just one of those creative solutions for uh, applying a CD200. Okay, now we're going to move into the CD200D, and the 200D 
You can see down here on the right, this is a CD200. The CD200D is mounted in a DISN type enclosure. Uh, that is, uh, that it is serviceable. There's two, uh, there's uh, circuit boards mounted inside here that uh, can be removed and replaced. They have 19 pin primary connectors, which is like a lot of our CPU type ignitions. Um, these are 8, 12, or 16 outputs. Again, you know, there's only a difference in reducing costs when you go to all, all the same connectors on all of them. And the other thing that's different about the CD200D is this will also work with a Hall effect. So it gives you a little more application flexibility. And you know, Hall effects are triggered by magnets. So the disc will now be a, mag a disc that's aluminum with magnets embedded in it. And it's a similar design, you know, it's a two plus one, three plus one, you know, where the uh, last magnet after the last firing index magnet. And uh, so the, the trick here is, is mounting a disc with a, the Hall effect uh, trans, transducer um, or pickup, uh, getting that mounted on the engine. So sometimes uh, mounting it at a uh, cam speed drive is, is the hardest part of applying one of these. Easy retrofit for existing DISN ignitions. Uh, the DISN has been around for many years, uh, very similar to the CEC ignition on the Waukesha's, same housing, very similar feature set. But uh, the CD200D has a lot more features and a lot more flexibility. Uh, it's programmed with a terminal program where the the, C, the DISN 800 uh, is a little bit of uh, older design and it does not have that interface and it does not interface with any kind of a terminal program. But the nice thing is it's the same mounting footprint so you can easily replace the DISN with a 200D. Uh, same power draw and voltage requirements. Uh, you can reuse the Hall effect and magnet disc if desired. You know, in the DISN 800s were Hall effect triggered, Hall effect pickup. The added features, uh, advanced diagnostics. Uh, you know, on the DISN 800, you had three LEDs. Uh, here, you're going to get the, the advanced diagnostics of a terminal program. Uh, primary and secondary diagnostics, as well as low power supply voltage shutdowns as uh, indicators, among others. Uh, you also get individual cylinder timing adjustment and timing versus RPM maps. Customizable features and programming availability uh, through the terminal program software. And then again, you can also use it with a magnetic pickup or a Hall effect pickup. So again, it becomes much more versatile. So the, after the CD200, uh, we came out with the CD200D and eventually, uh, we'll move into the NGI 1000, which is in the same case, but again, gives you even more features. So, because it's one unit, but can use either a Hall effect or a magnetic pickup, we use different harnesses for the pickups. There's two harnesses. And if we just go back, you can see there's a harness for the uh, primary that goes out to the coils, and then you have an input harness, and then this was a uh, timing control connector for some of the other features that we'll show you. But this one just has two connectors, and in that uh, extra connector here, that's where you're going to connect this harness, and then it'll have a connector for a magnetic pickup, and this is the unshielded variation. See there's no conduit, no liquid tight conduit there. And then if you are going to use it as a Div 1 or Div 2 uh, shielded installation, you're going to get a harness like this. This goes into a J-Box, and then all of your pickups and everything will go into that J-Box and be connected on a terminal strip internally. So again, this is still a magnetic pickup harness. The Hall Effect harness is, again, unshielded. Uh, you have a, a connector uh, for the MS connector on the Hall Effect pickup. And then if it's shielded you're going to have one with the liquid tight and again all that's going to be done in a j box so same unit uh, just depending on the harnesses 
to be chosen, whether it's shielded or unshielded. CD200D terminal program, which is the same terminal program for the CD200, so it's got the same feature set and uh, same look and feel to almost all of our terminal programs for the ignitions. And we'll just run through uh, some of the uh, things that you're going to see on here. The column on the left side is actually something you don't fill in. It is actually populated by the actual uh, conditions on the engine, like the engine speed. When it's running, it'll show you the RPM. It'll show you the timing. And the timing over here at 32, you have a couple things that add up to that. You, you first start up with your lineup angle of 40 before. That's where your disk lines up. And then you're going to have switch position 7, loop input, insertion retard, and then RPM retard. And then when you add things up over here of insertion retard and uh, RPM retard, you're going to get 8 degrees of retard. So when you subtract 8 from 40, you get 32. So this is what you would adjust your lineup angle with the, uh, the click right here and change this so that your spark timing would match what matches what you would see on a timing light. So it's just a way to trim this in so that you actually see the correct timing right here. The switch position, as you click it in, it's going to show you the position and how many degrees of retard. Uh, your loop input, if you have a 4 to 20 coming in, it's going to show you that. The observed disk, since you're not rotating, it's 0 plus 1. Insertion retard, uh, if you don't want to use the switch on the, the rotary switch, uh, you can simply uh, put over here in the gray, you put a different number in here. Uh, if you want to retard it uh, two more degrees, you'd put a 4 in here, and that would show up over here, and then that would put your timing back to 30 before top dead center. So all these values, are, these are ones that you can actually click on and make entries. Um, ones over here are actually just calculated. Um, your supply voltage, you see here at 24.5, you have the ability to uh, set a low voltage setting. This one's set at 6, but uh, typically if you're running 24 volts, you might want to set that at about 20 volts or so. That will tell you if your battery's uh, discharging uh, as you're, you're operating. Your run speed setting at 200 RPM, and again, this would be set higher than your cranking RPM. And then once your engine starts and it exceeds this run speed setting, uh, you're going to have a flag over here that tells you that you're running. You also have one that's cranking, you know, when it's, it senses that you're, you're uh, being you're triggering your pickups. Uh, it'll tell you that you're cranking. Then it'll tell you when you're running. Uh, if there's a disc error, uh, it'll tell you right here. Uh, again, you set up the, the disc, 8 plus 1 here. And if you click on this button right here, it will test your disc uh, constantly. If you have, instead of 8 plus 1, if you have 7 plus 1, you miss a magnet alignment, magnet falls out, it's going to immediately shut you down and give you this error. Um, you have a purge delay. Uh, if you want to automatically make this system uh, uh, crank so many cycles before it actually starts the ignition up, you can do that. You got an overspeed right here, a run speed setting, low voltage, and then you have energy bit uh, zero and one, and a combination of these gives you the different energy levels. Uh, the other thing you see here. Uh, the diagnostics, if you trip this, it'll give you the LED diagnostics and the blink codes on the uh, LEDs, on the LED on the outside of the unit. And then uh, the slave firing, uh, you'll see that when we look at the DISNs, it's got some pre-programmed slave angles because when you have a disc, you can only, and, and you have the index angle, which is the odd one after the last firing, you can't put oddly uh, position magnets and trigger off the odd magnet. So what we do is uh, what we call a slave firing, where in this case it's going to fire, uh, because you have an 8 plus 1, it's going to fire every 45 degrees, and then it's going to fire 30 degrees later. So that's how we get the odd angles 
like you do in some of the larger engines with, uh, say, a 16 solar engine. It's not going to fire 40, 45 degrees or 22 and a half degrees. It's going to have to add some odd angles in there. The other thing you see over here are the cranks log. Uh, how many times it cranked and how many times it started. So two, two start attempts uh, were aborted. How many uh, times uh, the cycles or how many times this engine uh, has run, rotated. Uh, warm boot, that's every time you turn the power on and off. The cold boot is when it, uh, uh, I'm sorry, cold boot is when you turn the power on and off. The warm boot is when it has to restart the micro itself internally. So it, looking at some of these things, you can tell if, if you're getting a war, lot of warm boot logs, you may have too much electrical noise, either from the DC system or from uh, non-resistor plugs or something else causing a lot of electrical noise. Things that, you others, things that you see over here are your individual cylinder timing. You can give each cylinder a little bit of retard individually. Uh, that shows up here. Uh, with the diagnostics, just like our systems with the CPUs where it gives you the spark diagnostics. Uh, switch cal, seven degrees, switch zero through seven position. Put different degrees of retard in there. The loop cal, um, four milliamps, you got zero degrees of retard, and at 20 milliamps, you got 16 degrees of retard. And then the RPM, uh, at zero, you've got six degrees of retard. So as soon as you crank this engine, it's going to show uh, RPM retard of six right over here. And in, at zero, that's what you're going to get. So this thing's going to be six degrees retarded. And as the engine runs and starts to ramp up, once you hit 600 RPM, it'll be at full advance. So we went over this page. Uh, in detail, uh, just because the other ones are going to be very similar, and we'll just show you the, the differences as we move through to the other systems. So DISN 800, um, we make it so that it fits a variety of different engines, and on here there's a chart, and with different switch positions on the side, you can make it fit different applications. But again, it's CD ignition, uh, Single pickup system, Hall effect, uh, very accurate ignition timing based on the disc and position of the magnets. There's an alarm output uh, can be triggered, you know, if there's a, an issue with the operation of the unit. Very simple onboard diagnostics with the LEDs. Um, again, the DISN is uh, disc triggered with magnets in the, the disc. Uh, so you purchase these, uh, sometimes, you know, they just have a pilot hole in the middle. You may have to bore them out, mount them on the end of a cam, uh, make brackets or uh, housings to uh, fit the pickup so that it mount, mounts and, and looks at the edge of the magnet. Uh, the most typical that you've probably seen out there is on the VHP Waukesha's, uh, where it either had the CEC uh, or a disc for a DISN. Those are pretty common. The magnet discs are either 5 inch or 7.45, and we make them in 4 plus 1 in both diameters, 5 plus 1, 6, 8, 10, 12 plus 1 magnets in all those different diameters. Now, the DISN 801M, that was a magnetic pickup version of the DISN 800C, and the 801M is now obsolete. Uh, NGI 1000 will do both magnetic pickup and Hall effect, and it has a whole lot more features, and it's much less expensive. So there's no reason uh, to continue on with a model that uh, can be replaced by another more uh, versatile product uh, that costs less money. So the DISN, uh, there's three different models. Again, the M is obsolete now. You've got an 800C, and that gives you a, a group of patterns uh, with that product. We also made an 801 with a different group of patterns that was uh, typically used for uh, some of the OEM, or I mean 
European engines that had some different firing angles. We couldn't do it all in one with the switch and the position, so we couldn't make this where all one did everything. So there's two versions, 800C, 801C. Again, just a different group of firing pattern codes. Uh, and again, before that, there was a 400, a 600, and a 700, and uh, those have been obsolete for some number of years. But if you do run across any of them, and these are the old stamped steel uh, cases before the cast aluminum case. Uh, yeah, these were stamped aluminum cases. So uh, these are much more watertight than the old type cases. So 800C is up to 16 outputs, single Hall effect event input, two PCB design, power and logic, die castle housing. Uh, the EEPROM is selectable through the switch on the side. In 96, we uh, moved into the new housing uh, over the four, six, and 700 variation. Timing control, uh, it's got a manual timing switch on the end. Another one for pickup and disc alignment, uh, selects from the chart. It's also through the connector side here. It's got a four to 20 milliamp input, zero to 1,000 ohm pot. Uh, you can also do one step timing control in case you have two different fuel gases, propane or biofuel. Uh, it's pretty typical to, you know, if you run out of BTU in your biofuel gas, uh, you can up with propane and or natural gas and just shift the timing with a one step. The diagnostics, you have LEDs on the front, you've got a power on LED, an application LED. It's basically uh, looking at your, make sure that what you've selected here, you know, for like a four plus one or six plus one disc matches what you've got and what it's seeing. Uh, pickup input LED uh, so that you know your pickup is being triggered. Uh, you've also got a primary fault and an alarm output uh, through the harness. This gives you a little indication of what the uh, application switch, you know, it's A, B, C, D through all the way through uh, K, you know, H, and then the rotary switch for the timing control. Uh, to retard your timing back. And again, you set up the disc so that you're more advanced than where you want to start and then retard your timing back with the rotary switch. This is the firing that you will get with the DISN 800C, which is the 100C, the 101C is what you would see here. But with the application switch A, that's a six, Output six plus one disc fires every 60 degrees even and it fires these letters on the output harness. Switch B, it's a eight plus one disc. It's either got four, eight, or 16 outputs. And depending on the, how you've wired it, if it's a four output with an eight plus one, you're going to wire it to A, E, M, and S, and then A, B, C, D, E, F if it's 22 and a half degree even using all 16. And then again, uh, when we talk about that slave angle, this is typical of what a slave angle would be, a 30 degree slave angle. So it's eight plus one uh, would be every 45 degrees, but instead uh, with this, we're able to do the 1530. Uh, and this would be the what you would put in as a slave angle when you get into the CD 200s, 200Ds, NGI 1000s. Okay, so now we're at the NGI 1000, which incorporates all the, the nice features of the prior systems and adds more and it reduces costs. So um, quite a big step forward in technology. And the other thing, uh, I copied this from the uh, brochure, this section right here. Uh, we also see that we have a 1000 RC, which is remote control. So going back into the ignition systems uh, of, of previous design, uh, a lot of people that were doing the engine control system, you know, their own detonation system, their own knock sensors, running it through their own controls, and then trying to write Modbus registers, control timing on the ignitions, 
um, all the systems, whether it's a CPU 95, a CPU 2000, um, any of the prior systems that, uh, you know, CD200, uh, 200 EVS that we've, again, we've, we obsoleted that EVS in favor of the NGI 1000. But any time that you try to write to these ignition systems multiple times per second, uh, you can eventually uh, overwrite the, the memory availability in the product. And then over a period of six months or two years, you basically have overwritten it so much that uh, it no longer is functional. So uh, we never envisioned somebody writing to it that often, uh, but as controls have evolved, people want to use them in different ways. So the, the 1000RC, uh, it's a remote control where you're actually writing to different RAM locations where it can t you can write to this thing for the next 40 years and it will still function properly. It's geared for that kind of an application. It's the same price as the NGI 1000. It's just got a different set of Modbus registers and uh, a couple different things that can be programmed that vary functional in exactly the same way as the standard NGI 1000. So um, you can optimize the ignition timing per cylinder on the basis of, of detonation, knock, or temperature of the cylinder by a PLC. The RC firmware offers user to continuously adjust several parameters via the Modbus communication. You can, that can therefore tune the ignition to the engine conditions. Uh, these are the parameters that can you, you can change. The spark duration, uh, the spark current, and there are some maximum milliamps and microseconds. And the ignition timing um, and the cylinder offsets. So if you have a cylinder that is uh, tending to detonate, you can do two things. You can retard that cylinder's timing a little bit. Um, and as the other thing that you can do is uh, global timing, you can uh, back off or change that timing. You can reduce the load through the PLC, whatever that might be. And the other thing is uh, over the life of the spark plugs, obviously we've seen through all these EVS or enhanced VeriSpark type ignitions that if you give it full energy uh, right from the get-go, uh, your spark plug life will not be optimized. You'll wear out your plugs more quickly. So with something like this, you can start with uh, low spark energy with a fresh set of plugs. And as the fuel BTU changes, the uh, load on the engine changes, or whatever your engine management system wants to do to control it, you can bump up the spark energy or duration to meet the demands uh, that are being sensed by your management system. So it uh, addresses all the issues where uh, people want to control their engine in a, a, a more elaborate way than what we had initially uh, envisioned uh, with the first systems, uh, whether they were CPU or uh, the uh, disk triggered systems. So the uh, NGI 1000 is in the uh, DISN or the uh, uh, CP, uh, CD200D type case, same mounting footprint, same output harness, different uh, input harness a little bit. Uh, event trigger system, you, for use on small, medium-sized spark ignited engines, up to 16 cylinder output. Uh, we make a, an eight in the 16 cylinder unit. Uh, natural gas, biogas applications, because you can program it and adjust your spark energy and duration. Um, spark energy control is current versus time. Uh, between 50 and 200 milliamps and duration up to 1100 microseconds. Standard CD type sparks like you would have had in the DISN are also available at the bottom end of the scale. And again, lean burn engines or other difficult to ignite mixtures is where this uh, sort of shines. Uh, so it's configured, not programmed. It's a terminal program that was similar to the, what we had shown you with the detail before. It's Windows-based, uh, LED-based diagnostics for troubleshooting. You've got a high voltage, uh, which tells you that the unit is powered and it's got energy to fire the coils, a diagnostic LED, and then a uh, 
24 volt LED tells you that you have power. They have bus communications, so you can information out of the other one, and you can even write to it over Modbus, but uh, you can't constantly write to the standard unit. You, if you want to have an engine management system, you have to use the RC variation. And again, these with the connectorized uh, connectors, uh, good for a Div2 group CD hazardous location. Again, it's backwards compatible with uh, CD200 systems, CD200D. Uh, one thing you will note is this has to be 24 volt powered and it can draw much higher current because it's delivering more current out through those, uh, the primary into the coils. Um, terminal program is very, very similar. This one can do a mag pickup, a Hall effect pickup. Uh, again, mag pickup has to be a metal disc with holes or holes in the flywheel. Hall effect, magnets in an aluminum disc, and then a powered inductive type. Um, magnetic pickups are inductive, but this is sometimes a three-wire uh, magnetic pickup uh, that some OEMs have used, and that allows the pickup to uh, be triggered at much lower RPM. So it's just another variation, and this is more flexible in being able to work with that powered inductive type. Uh, military style and uh, connectors, um, patented control technology, and this is just showing you some of the secondary uh, duration and uh, power uh, scope traces. So when you looked at the CD1, uh, we saw a box, we saw a disc, harness going to a pickup out to the disc. Same thing with the harness going out to the coils. Um, NGI 1000 is very similar. It's just sometimes you can use different discs, you can use different pickups, a lot more flexibility with the features. A um, whole lot more than uh, what we did with the CD1. And the cost is, is very com comparable uh, and not much of a step up from a CD1 system. It's like I said, it's got 10 or 20 times the features for not that much more money. Um, and again, these can still do single fire, double firing applications, uh, up to 16 cylinders. Um, gives you some of the specifications here, uh, up to 2,500 RPM, uh, analog input, four to 20, uh, timing range about 25 degrees of retard. Um, and they, all, they both have Modbus RTU communications. Just gives you some of the mounting dimensions, similar to the DISN or the CD200D, mount in the same place. This one uh, is showing you a magnetic pickup with the disc and uh, These are magnets in an aluminum disc uh, triggering that pickup. Uh, this is a magnetic pickup. This is just the ABCD, the, the terminals on the connector going in right here. And then if you use a different harness, this one right here, this is when you have the, the three wires, the ABC, uh, LM and N, right over here, goes out to the ABC of this harness, and this is for the powered pickup or a Hall effect type pickup. The blink codes are, again, much more elaborate than the prior products. This one, <clears throat> the LED is on, where you see on over here, it's about two seconds on. And then at a much faster rate, it'll give you the blink and then it'll stay on. So uh, if you got on six quick blinks and then on, that tells you you've got a low supply voltage. And uh, same with all the, the one through six blinks uh, with the engine cranking. And again, this was engine stopped, engine cranking. Uh, tells you that if it just goes on, off, it's purging. On, steady, it's firing normally, off, wrong disk pattern detected. With the engine running, steady on is firing normally, 
on with one blink, open secondary, two blinks, primary short, three blinks, primary open, four blinks, no charge, six blinks, low supply voltage. So you can see with just this legend right here, you can tell a whole lot with a diagnostic LED. Some people don't want to have to hook up to a laptop out in the field. So just codes they can read and see what's going on with this product and help to diagnose the any kind of a, a problem with pickups or voltage or anything else that might be going on. The configuration or software package, again, when you look at it, it's almost identical in it, what you see on this side and over here. Uh, this is all pretty much the same, but what is different is uh, the powered pickup. And you can, if you click on this, it's on falling edge, otherwise it's on leading edge of the, the signal. Um, and then also over here, you've got the spark current and the duration. And uh, you just click on here and from the menu, you reduce that down to the available options and you can make those changes right there. The control input, uh, very much like the DISN, uh, you're going to be able to uh, look at degrees of retard versus your input. Uh, you also can program a timing versus RPM curve in there so it does it automatically. All depends on how elaborate you need to go. And engine performance uh, versus spark current and duration. Uh, so, and this is just a paragraph out of the installation instructions. Uh, tailoring the spark current and duration to the engine demands is important. And by applying the best spark profile, it helps ensure the spark plug wear and engine performance meet expectations. Uh, things to take into consideration are spark plug change intervals, KV at the end of the life, and the demand of the spark plug over the entire engine load. Uh, it's recommended to monitor for engine misfire at all load conditions and tune the spark as necessary using the current and duration menus or via, via the Modbus registers. Higher current, short duration profiles generate a lot of initial energy to ignite a poor gas mixture, uh, like a biogas or uh, such. And longer duration spark helps keep a mixture lit longer into the rotation cycle, possibly when you're at a leaner mixture. So there's different philosophies and what works the best. So this gives you the ability to give you best spark plug life or make sure that this thing will fire and ignite the, the, a poor mixture or a lean mixture. This is the Modbus register. And you see register 40,014, this is 40,013. So the combination of these two, if you select zero on here, it's the same as any typical CD ignition that we have in its spark. And then you, you cannot choose any of the, anything in this register uh, to give it a longer duration. Um, <clears throat> you put a one in there, you got 50 milliamps of uh, spark current uh, all the way up through 200. In this chart, obviously, if you choose 200 here, you can only go up to 400 microseconds over here. If you go all the way to 1100 microseconds, you can only give it 50 milliamps plus over here. So uh, this area right here would just draw too much current off the DC system and overtax the circuitry. So you have quite a bit of uh, variation between milliamps and duration to give you a lot of the spark energy and uh, tailor it to the, the needs of your application. The note in the installation instructions for the RC, this over here, uh, is the key to the what you see in green and what's in orange here. And uh, <clears throat> terminal programs revised for the 1000RC for communication uh, or after serial numbers 2001. The screenshot provides here reflects the significant changes. The note ID has been changed from 1 to 11, right up here, uh, to differentiate between the firmware versions. Green and uh, Background parameters are also RAM-based. It can be freely written. So anything over here, which is your duration and your spark 
uh, milliamps and also the time individual timing of all the cylinders and the global timing can all be written to freely as many times as you want uh, you can't damage the unit by overwriting too many times um, orange background parameters are used to specify preload values which are copied to the green ram based values that power up and upon restart so obviously when this thing isn't running uh, you you aren't going to be writing anything to the ram typically because you you aren't reading anything off the engine operation so your control system uh, needs a baseline of where to start so that uh, baseline timing or duration spark global timing default individual uh, these are the, the default values so as soon as you start rotating and firing this is what you got then you start through your engine management system writing and, and making changes as you see necessary so as you see the rest of this looks pretty much the same as the 200d uh, cd 200d um, and the standard ngi 1000 the rc just gives you the ability to change some of the parameters here uh, for being continually written to by an engine management system so this point that concludes the presentation on the disc triggered systems uh, at this point uh, we can take any questions uh, from the audience and Dave if you can uh, lead in and uh, moderate I would appreciate it of course well Thomas thank you very much um, we uh, obviously covered a, quite a bit of ground here this these, these product lines have you know been under development for many years and obviously continue to evolve uh, with with time, uh, so uh, for for Tom, obviously you know, he's got a deep background in these in these products. Any uh, is there any specific questions anybody has, Tom, um, or on, on this product or any anything related? David, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, this is Donnie Smith. Ages. Um, I, I got in about halfway through. I had other things pending. Um, does this unit have a test mode? No. Okay, good. Okay. All right, thank you. And what Donnie's referring to is the test mode on some of the CPU 2000s and 95s where you can force outputs to fire either singly or in rotation. Uh, sometimes uses a tool to check out wiring to make sure it's functioning and, and has continuity to the coils, but some people don't like it. Uh, some people have to delete that feature because of, of some of the dangers of igniting mixtures and cylinders when the engine's stationary. 